Becker Racing am Start. Da geht es ja auch noch um die Mannschaftswertung. Das werden wir dann aber heute Nachmittag ein bisschen auflösen, welches Team, welcher Bewerber, also über alle Klassen. Good day everybody, uh, this is Tina Snell again joining you from uh, Youth Force Racing in South Africa. We are at the line on the 85cc class from the ADA CMX Masters from Germany. Uh, the 85cc riders lining up for their race. Uh, we have a very, very special co-star joining us for the broadcast. We are South African 13 year old South African rocker Ruan Nell. Ruan, morning, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Tinas, and thank you so much for having me. All right, so uh, Ruan uh, is a, a top class rock and roller. We will play you some of his stuff a little bit later on. And uh, uh, he visited his first motocross race yesterday first time ever and uh, how did you enjoy that Ruan? it was action-packed adrenaline filled it was absolutely amazing to be there the, the contestants were amazing but i especially had my eye on Tinky. oh Tinky, yes the South yeah. rider. now if you see the race now the 15 second board has gone up the riders are ready to get going and you will tell us what you think of the intensity of the start here with 40 riders on the gate. So, All right. Maxi Werner nicht so gut weggekommen. Honen, das I think it's crazy. Holt sich den <laughs> Yes. Anything can happen. Anything can happen in those first like three seconds, and it just makes you nervous. Oh, 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 Das wird jetzt eine so, uh, for Ruan, you know, yesterday you went to a regional ja, so race in South Africa. Und now, this is a, a top-level international race. You can see in the background there all the campers there of the riders and everything. You can see it's it's another level of racing altogether, right? Yes. No, it's, it's definitely uh, different. I can see the level is, uh, the bar is set way higher than yesterday, but... I still think some of the dann regional Werner, riders can Rudolf. participate in this. You are quite right. Uh, you know, South Africa has had some great riders. In, in fact, a good couple of world champions have come to from South Africa and a good couple of riders at top international level. Uh, we're just checking in with the uh, with the commentary from Germany and see, you can see the ruts, uh, you know, on the takeoff to those jumps, which make it really, really difficult for them to maintain control when they take off. Yeah. See the top riders, the rider in the orange there in the red that's just gone into the lead is Maximilian Werner. He is a, a, a German rider. He's also a member of our Youth Force Racing Group. Uh, he's just moved into the lead. Uh, and incidentally, he's a rider that knows what you do as well, uh, Ruan. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what uh, it is that, that you do that makes life special. Ozolins 5, Pikant 6, I, um, Dunsen 7, Adomatis 8, Bartlett. I do music professional. Raus? Wir and, schauen uh, mal. So, so you, you perform, you've, you've uh, performed on a television series in South Africa, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, talent search competition where you won national television, is that correct? Yes, it's not my famous wooden show's name. Right, right. And uh, you just had a great moment on Instagram yesterday, uh, so tell us about that. Okay. There is this amazing, amazing singer named Dino. His voice is angelic. And he commented on my post saying, great work. It just meant so much to me and my father because we listen to his music non-stop, day in, day out. 
die Spitzenposition right. uh, Dino Jelusic uh, from sagen, Croatia, incidentally, uh, a great musician, one of the top, top rock vocalists in the world, great friend of South Africa, he visited us in South Africa, and also a great friend of motocross, uh, Dino had in fact performed at a European Championship race in a neighboring Slovenia, which is right next to Croatia. So uh, let's just get back to the race action, I'll just give us our viewers, uh, the standings as they are, we of course have two young riders from our group, uh, Freddie Bartlett and Frederick Grant Thump, who are participating in this race. They're only 11 years old, their first, first race at such big level against some very old, much older boys. Freddie Grant Thump is at the moment 16, a great ride at the moment. We're just trying to pick up on Freddie Bartlett to see where he is in the race at the moment. Um, uh, oh, and another rider going down. You can see, Ruan, all kinds of action going on there. That track is very, very tough. Right, Freddie Bartlett in 12th position right now. They are only 11 years old, both of them great friends. Uh, and they're racing against riders that are up to 15 years of age. Uh, you know, so it, it was a sudden kind of decision, in, especially in, in the, in the uh, case of Freddie Bartlett. We decided in the week to try and arrange for him to go and race there. So uh, it was great for him to just qualify and then to get well into the point. This is a great result for the young Englishman stroke stream. You can see, Ruan, you, you saw yesterday already how important line choices are in the track. Uh, I mean, you mentioned it as did your father, and you can see here on a track like this, it's really important, right? Mm, yes. All right, and, and you see the, the, the tabletops uh, with the track we were at yesterday. It's a hard pack track, so the, the tabletops, the takeoffs, uh, aren't as rutted, but here they are, they are deep ruts, so the riders have to be very, very, oh, actually we're pretty front stump in view, our little uh, Danish rider, he was in view right there, and uh, so obviously the commentators in Germany pick up on what we've been saying, hopefully, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and we um, uh, have some focused on the riders that we support. So, Ruan, uh, talking about internationally, what, what are your plans for your career? So, my plans are probably to move to Scandinavia, Sweden, and um, Norway, Denmark, each of those countries that start a future there. Because uh, <laughs> the kind of music I love is prominent in those countries. All right, we see some riders, so there's a medical team there, and we saw that Maximilian Werner, our top uh, level German guy, had gone down, so Bradley Mesters from Holland in the lead at the moment, and, and it looks like actually um, uh, Maximilian Werner lost a lot of time, and I see on the climbing board uh, Sasha Kunen, the guy that we saw crash right in the beginning, uh, he'd already come back up to sixth place, so you see how fast that ride is, right? That's crazy. Yeah, he, yeah, he won yesterday by a huge, huge margin, of course, uh, in terms of, of uh, racing there, the Belgians and the Dutch are very, very good in deep sand tracks. Uh, there we actually see some of the fast riders going around. Uh, the Belgians and the Dutch are very, very good in deep sand tracks uh, because that is the kind of tracks that they have at home. Uh, now, uh, you say you're going to move to, you're uh, hoping to move to Scandinavia, Sweden. Of course, you have family in Sweden, right? Yes, my grandmother actually lives in Sweden in a small fishing village called Fiskebukshi. Beautiful, so beautiful there. And, mm. and something special about that fishing village, it's got a close link as we watch Black Mesters. He is also the Dutch champion and, and hoping to add a German title to that today. He's a young Dutchman. He is in the in the blue kit on the green Kawasaki. Actually unusual to see a Kawasaki at top level in the 85 city class nowadays. It's mostly ATM Saskavanas and Yamahas left in the class. But anyhow, getting back to Sweden, 
very close to where your grandmother lives and the place where you actually performed is a place that has a huge link to motocross and, and you will know the place that I'm speaking about. Wahnsinnsrennen von dem Belgier. Oh yes, so yes, yes. Auf die 400. Udavala, because you performed in Udavala, and Udavala, of course, is is very well known in motocross terms. The right against the mountain in Udavala is the most beautiful track. Um, you know, so yeah, we have that. As you see, uh, this rider making his way through the field there, because Albers there are uh, 433. So, uh, yeah, action all the way throughout the field. Now, you've, you've made some friends with some motocross riders just in the small, the short time that you've been at the track, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, yeah, you said that you saw this rider, Tinky, as a rider from Palaboro, a South African rider in the 1-5cc class, who also dominated the class. Yeah. He was lapping. He was lapping the other riders. I also um Thor was also amazing. Yeah, Thor. I actually had breakfast with Thor and his dad this morning. Uh Thor Johnson. Uh Thor is he's also only just twelve years old as we see Maximilian Werner. He is also a member of our Youth Force Racing Group, that rider on 494 that you just saw. Uh, there, I think we see Kunin. Uh, you know, he's really, really fast. I uh, mean, as, as you saw, he went down in the, in the beginning. And uh, yeah, he's already up to third. Amazing ride from Kunin. You know, he was stone last, that rider there. Uh, he was stone last, and he's already back up to third. It takes immense discipline and skill to, to yeah. do good yeah. in this sport, and I think I think I think that Warren is amazing. I how do you go from stone last to third? It's crazy. You have to pass so many bikes. Yeah, exactly. You know, just from, uh, you know, and, and in, a, in a manner of laps, because it's still only half race distance. Uh, the race has, uh, it's normally 20 minutes plus two laps, and there's nine minutes uh, 38 left in the race. So, so Kunin could be heading for the win. Um, He's, uh, according to that, a few seconds behind um, uh, Maximilian Werner and then nine seconds behind the leader, Bradley Mesters. So this is going to be an interesting few minutes to see if he can actually catch Mesters. And uh, we're just checking back and to see on our friends, Freddie Bartlett, our young friend from Sweden, is in 12th position. And when you move to Sweden, you can go and say, Hi to Freddy, of course. Another friend of ours from Denmark, Jakob Fransen, is in 11th position. And Frederik Ranstam, uh, the other young Dane, is in 15th position. So good for both those riders and their dads. Now, speaking of dads, you saw the passion of the motocross dads right at the racing. Wahnsinn! A man on a mission. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Actually, the passion are uh, there, and, and Kunin has got past uh, Werner. Kunin, Kunin is definitely in another postal code in terms of speed here today. Uh, those riders that they're passing, they are riders that are being lapped. Um, and you can see how he's, he's taking the, the wide line, maintaining momentum around the corners, which is important on the sandy tracks. Um, there you see him, uh, obviously, the cameras will be focusing uh, wholly on Kunin. Uh, another rider from Holland, Kian Dunsen, in sixth place. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting all the way through the field. Now, um, Ron, you, uh, obviously, many of these riders, because we've added you to the Youth Force Racing Group, so many of these riders are actually members of the group and have seen some of your music, you know, and we are hoping to do a motocross action video with some of your music. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, of course, you have a, a, a new friend and, and fellow guitarist, Zach Glantz, from America. Zach is uh, also a very, very good young guitarist, 11 years old, and uh, we actually did two videos with Zach's music, one for Tim Geiser, who's the... Uh, 
current MXGP world champion and, and a, a three-time motocross world champion and also one for Guy Puri, who is an 11-year-old skater who was the first skater ever, not of age, first skater ever of any age to do a 1080-degree jump on a vert ramp. Now, when you... Much like it was for you when Dino sends you a message, uh, the name that everybody knows from skating is, is the name Tony Hawk. Uh, I think oh, if yeah. you're a gamer, you'll know Tony Hawk. No, yeah, when, I love Tony Hawk. I've seen him, yeah. yeah. So when he did his jump, uh, one of the first messages that he got was from Tony Hawk. So uh, that is just amazing. And you can see Sasha Kunin, uh, he's pulled away quite a distance from Maximilian Werner already. And we'll see when they pass the timing beams, uh, we'll just see uh, how close he's gotten to Bradley Mesters in the lead. Oh, all right. Mesters has passed the timing board. We'll see when Kunin goes past. We'll see what the difference is. Okay, 11 and a half seconds uh, that he has to catch up with five minutes left in the race plus two laps. Or, uh, yes, so uh, it's, it's a tough ask, but he might be able to do it. We'll, we'll see how he does that. That's him and Werner in, in the fight. Um, now, the MX Master Series is run by the ADAC, which is like the what we would have the Automobile Association in South Africa, but it's a huge organization. They have 30 million members. So the racing is a big thing in Germany. Um, now, also, when, when you go to Europe and Sweden, um, you know, we will definitely arrange for you to get to the motocross at Udavala if ever there's a GP there again. I think that would be great fun for you. Yes, that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. And and by that time, you'll be so well known in moto terms with, with a video there and, and many friends from from uh, the Youth Force Racing Group and also from Motocross Forums uh, that, uh, you know, maybe they'll ask you to perform there. Who knows? That would be great. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> right. Now, the Tensfeld um, in Germany is in the old, uh, what we would have called the old East Germany when it was still the East and West Germany. Uh, you can see his beautiful, beautiful sand tracks. Uh, the guys are always so well organized. Great races, you know, they, um, the medical facilities are the best if something does happen. Uh, uh, the, the organization is so great. Uh, you know, we, we just know, for instance, with entering Freddy now, you know, with it being a rush, rush affair, uh, it was so helpful and organized from the German organizers uh, that, uh, you know, that they got everything done for us in time and even offered to help if, if they battle to get a, a ferry because they have to take a ferry of course from where they are to, to Germany. Have, have you ridden in the ferries when you were in Sweden? Yes, I've ridden in um, a few ferries actually. There's this uh, tiny ferry that goes from a fishing village to another village across the fjord at um, where my grandma lives. And then there's um, a few other ferries that cross over giant rivers, which you go, you ride on it, you ride on the ferry with the car, and then you just go over and then you ride. Yeah, off the ferry. Right. Yes. Oh, and our Estonian so friend, Romeo Pikant, what a pity. Uh, that's him that's down there. Yeah, Romeo was the. Uh, um, he was good yesterday. He had a podium finish. Uh, and, and Estonia actually did so well yesterday because in this race, Romeo uh, had, a, had a podium. And then over at the European Championships, Mako Vettik from Estonia had a podium. And then our friend um, in the 1 to 5 class, and then our friend Mate, um, Jurgen Matthias Talviku had the podium in the 250 class. So we had Estonians on podiums all over. And, and it's so great, you know, Ron, this, uh, this country is only 1.3 million people, Estonia. It's a, well, actually, when you're in Sweden, you can take a ferry to Estonia. Estonia is an overnight ferry, but it's, it's a nice place to visit. And, uh, um, you know, they're such a small country, but they have so many international motocrosses. It's just like a sport that they just excel at. 
And and now you uh, you and your dad were saying, uh, you know, one of the reasons for wanting to move to Scandinavia and, and Sweden is, as I said, with Estonia and the motocross, the Swedes and, 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 and the, um, oh, it's visual, just uh, interrupting myself. We have Bradley Mestis just rounding the corner here and coming down the straight from the other side. There we have Kunen. So he's almost within sight of Mestis. So he's definitely on the hunt now. But in case, coming back to that, the streets are great for, for hard rock and metal music, aren't they? Yes, uh, they are definitely another breed. They are these soft people. They are so gentle, but the music they listen to is just heavy, heavy stuff. And did you know that most of the most of the albums uh, recorded, the heavy metal albums recorded uh, in Scandinavia, are usually done in a little shack in the Norwegian mountains? Oh. Well, let me tell you something. I went on tour, now that you say that, we went on tour with the South African band called Wait to Wonder. Um, actually, the band that, that produced the theme song for, for the show of it. Oh, and uh, you see Kunen, he's definitely on a job right now. Um, so, we had a gig, there was, we were playing at the Grand Prix in Latvia and also at the race in Estonia. So, we weren't sure where to get equipment we were waiting for for uh, gear and and somebody said, oh, in this little and i mean like you said your grandmother's village a tiny tiny little village called Vuru in estonia a tiny little village and they said oh there's a music guy there and i kid you not we, we, and it's a shack it's literally a shack like you said and and we, um, we went there and the guy opened up and i kid you not they had gear there that you could run a YouTube concert with. It was just incredible. The stuff that they had there, you know, I, I was, I mean, we were gobsmacked, you know, I, I was breathless just with the stuff they had there. And, and the guy, we were playing in a, a fair size club, but not huge. And the guy just came and stacked his equipment. I mean, he turned it to three and blown the walls away. Uh, it was just absolutely incredible. So I hear what you're saying about that. Look at that. Uh, uh, Kunin has got Mestas in sight. You see Mestas on the blue. And Kunan is just running the corner now. I don't know, he might just, just run out of time because it's too late. But if Mestas can't afford to make any, any mistakes, because then Kunan will be on him. And a great ride from Kunan from Stone Lost. So, uh, you know, uh, now seeing this, uh, does that bring back some of the excitement that you felt yesterday when you were at the track? Yes, definitely. I think the the jump still made me a bit scary when I watched them, even on the video, but on the live stream. But yeah, it was a crash. Yeah, right a down shoulder hurt, but he's okay. Looks like he's okay. Just sitting there thinking about his life choices, but. Uh, um, uh, waiting for somebody to come over, maybe an arm or a wrist injury. Yeah, as you said, it looks sketchy when you first see those jumpsters, little guys on 65 doing a 20 meter tabletop. Yeah, that's crazy. Right now, obviously, for those riders coming over the jump over the hill there, they blinded, they can't necessarily see that bike. So that's where the marshals come in and waving the flags just to warn them that there's something going on. Okay, there we have Bradley Nest. Just, just lapping a rider, just seeing visually if we can see where Kunan is in the battle. Mister's obviously got the got the, the memo from his pits to say, uh, "You better, yeah, there's Kunan just coming around the corner there." So still on the second last lap, when they pass the flag, now it will be the last lap. So uh, Mister's gone. Oh yes, there's Kunan. He's he's definitely on the hunt. Um, Mr. Spahn afford to relax one second. And of course, uh, you see, Ruan, when they get in amongst the riders that they left, it, it makes it difficult for them because, you know, those riders have to get out of the way. Mm, yeah. They're obviously on a different speed level. Yeah, you can see, look how fast that guy is. He's, he's truly, uh, actually, 
they two brothers i don't know uh, uh, why his brother isn't racing uh, but they they are two brothers look at Kunin coming to that corner he's taking no nonsense whatsoever from this track just about to lap this rider yeah making quick work of it and just see if we've got a visual on misters oh the riders have to go slow you oh and this rider crashes um, you're not allowed, of course, when a yellow flag is being waved, you're not allowed to jump, you know, in case you jump on an injured rider. So uh, if, if you do do that, you get a time penalty or in severe cases, maybe even disqualification. So Mesters and Kunin both rode the jump, so good for them. There's Mesters on the very distinctive blue, with a very, very distinctive blue kit and the, and the green bike. Oh, yes, it's visual. The gap is visual now. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and you can imagine how the parents are judging by what you saw yesterday, right? When, when they, a rider gets close to another one, you saw the mothers and fathers at the track. Yeah, I know. I see some of the, the riders and they go on jumps, they tilt their bike to the side. Does that mean anything? They, oh, yes. Uh, they, they call, um, you know, they whip them or, or sometimes they scrub them. I'll show a photo of the scrub because, ironically, you know, it looks spectacular to jump, but you don't make time while while jumping in the air you don't make really distance you make distance when you're on the ground so the idea is to get the bike down on the ground so when uh, that's where science gets to work for you so if you turn the bike sideways it gets down quicker you know so that you can continue racing so okay. lots of yeah yeah so uh, and and there are some I'll, I'll actually send you some visual now, now it's good that you as a second time motocross watcher noticed this you know this is exactly what our intention was um, there is mr going it looks like he's comfortable now um, so uh, it's good that you as the second time motocross watcher noticed this, uh, this. And, and i'll send you some visuals where the guys what they call scrub the bike so low that the handlebar actually scrapes the track. It's, it's truly insane how they do that, you know? I must tell you, the rider of the day is definitely Kunin, you know, coming from last, last, last to at least second and possibly first because you can see there's only this less than a straightaway difference between him and Bradley Mesters in the lead. So, uh, uh, you know, it, now, now, having seen what, what you saw here, yeah, would, would you want to go and attend like in an international race or Grand Prix? I think um, one day when I'm in Europe, I'd like, really like to do that. It's, um, I think it's awesome. Motorbikes, or it's jumps, yeah, and, and keep a lookout on the group because at 2 o'clock we are going to stream a road race uh, with also with some of our group members. Oh, there they've taken the flag. So that's uh, uh, Mesters taking the win and Kuhn in second and also the championship will have been decided. Now, um, if you keep a lookout for the road racing, because that's a, that's a different racing discipline, but mega exciting. I mean, those guys go at well over 200 kilometers an hour, young guys, and they uh, at the end of the race, there's maybe 10 guys within the same second. It is supremely exciting. According to our lap uh, timing screen, uh, Estonian Romeo Pikan, this fight is crash. Uh, I must just see how up to date this is still shown as 10th. I must just check if the timing screen is updated. We'll see. Yeah, we get the final Saisans race Kjof back. Then my fourth Saisans of uh, Latvia fifth. Ozelins, another Latvian. Ian Dunsen, the Dutch uh, rider eight. Adomaitis, he's from Lithuania. He's nine. Uh, Brocklet, actually an 11th. Amazing ride from our friend. And also Frederik Kranstamp, notable in 14th position. So uh, we'll just wait for the commentators to go down to the riders for a short interview. So, uh, Ron, your first motocross broadcast 
internationally is almost in the bag and that's a day after you've gone to your first race i mean that's uh, that's quite a steep learning curve isn't it no yeah i'm actually glad i'm here this motocross it, it, it definitely fills a void in one's life the adrenaline yeah yeah it's crazy and you need and, a little and, crazy and in your life sometimes <laughs> You do need a little crazy in your life. And the interesting thing is for you, of course, is, uh, you know, you get to know some of the riders and they get to know you. And I've seen several riders have followed you on your Instagram and, and on your Facebook page, which is Ruan Nell Music, R-U-A-N-N-E-L Music. So uh, we'll get people to follow you. But I've seen, I've noticed uh, several motocrossers have followed you already. Oh yeah, no, they're yeah. they're great people. I think they're tremendous yeah, they people. Are. And then maybe you know, if you then follow their pages and and uh, profiles back, you you know you can keep up to date with what's happening in their careers because the passion is is the same. You know, the passion that you have for music is the same that they have for their sport. You know. Yeah, no. yeah I can understand. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, who wouldn't love to be on a bike riding on dirt tracks? Exactly, exactly. So you can see the riders in the background there going uh, back to, to, the, to the paddock, the, to the tents and that. And I'm sure our friend Tommy Deitenbach, he's a good friend of ours, the German commentator, he'll pull the winner, Bradley Mesters, up for an interview. And Bradley Mesters, as far as I can calculate, will also be the series champion. So let's just hear what they say. Wir warten jetzt auf die Resultate. Let's just. Uh, oh, there's a official trying to run at the greatest speed he can muster to get uh, to the podium. Um, and uh, let's just uh, see if we can pick up the feed from the interviews there. Um, so, Ruan, what's on the plan for, for Sunday? Uh, Dad told me that you guys have a barbecue in the plan, right? Ah, yes. We're gonna, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do, but it's going to be great. Just like sit at the pool for a bit. <laughs> it's always nice to have a barbecue on a Sunday. Is it warm enough to swim yet? Okay, Mr. Juan, let's just run through the... Uh, results there. Goodman is second. Maximilian Lerner, home rider. Third, Nikolaus Kirchberg. Third. And uh, Saisans, uh, those are Latvian flags. Saisans and Ozolins, fifth and sixth. Uh, yeah, no, it looks like Romeo Pikand, our friend, did fall out. And a great, great ride from Freddie Bartlett. That's really noticeable. And also Freddy Grand Stamper in 14th position. Both young friends of ours. Actually, Ron, if you look on the Youth Force Racing page, those were the very first two riders that we interviewed in our Velocity um, Speed Talk interview series. Now, that was a little bit of a word play, the name Velocity that we came up with, because it, it uh, harkens back to velocity of speed. And I thought if you talk at speed, then we call it velocity. And uh, so that became our talk series. So, and and we'll have to well you also because uh, you and uh, other musicians have become honorary motocrossers in our view because of your interest in the sport. So let us just catch and see what they do with the interviews here. Just trying to get the feedback. Right. Yeah, you see the three riders, uh, the three bikes uh, uh, um, there, the podium bikes. These are, uh, you'll see two KTMs and a Kawasaki in the middle. It's very, very unusual to have a Kawasaki uh, at the, this level of racing. But of course, um, Bradley Mesters is in a team that also has some Kawasaki GP riders. So of course, they've got the tuning sorted out. We're just trying to get our feed. Uh, we uh, had a problem there with, uh, with the feed from Germany. I'm just trying to get it back so that we can see if we can get the interviews going. Uh, just one second and uh, we'll oh, run there. It's you and I and uh, we'll just try and refresh the feed from Germany so that we can get uh, our interviews 
uh, hopefully from uh, the winner Bradley Mesters and also uh, the he would also be our series champion. Now, uh, tell me, Ruan, your your recordings that you do, your videos uh, that are online, do you do them at home? Yes, we do every single one of them at home. But okay, and, and, and studio, yeah. Yeah, do you have some recording gear there and, and, and at home, some good uh, disc and, and software? Yes, I can actually show you our recording interface. If I can get it out here. All right, Ron, just before let's get back to the uh, um, interviews at the track and just see, looks like we have feedback. Apologies to our viewers. We had a problem with our team from uh, with our team from Germany. Uh, there we see our friend Maximilian Berner. Uh, the, the feed stopped. Unfortunately, uh, there you go. We have the Dutch national anthem. Ja, nochmal einen großen Applaus für unsere Top 3 und wir werden jetzt noch mal kurz zu den Interviews gehen und beginnen bei Platz Nummer 3 bei Maxi Werner. Okay, ja, German interview coming up. Podium, aber ah, wir hatten so den ja, Eindruck, du hättest ein kleines bisschen, bisschen mehr gewollt. Ja, ich wollte schon, wollte schon weiter, weiter oben stehen, stehen als ich Maxi Werner, friend says he would have ja, loved to have been higher up. Ja, bin aber auch zufrieden. But he's still also happy. Frieden kann man auch sein, wenn man auf dem Podium ist, aber ich glaube, dieser Crash, den du in den Hoch hast, hast das Qualifying. He had a heavy crash in Grevenbroich previous round. Injured his ribs. Ja, hängt mir immer noch ein bisschen nach. Fühl mich mal nicht zu 100% fit. Brauchst erst einmal fragen, bevor er jetzt... Also yeah, he only had one opportunity to train since his crash, so uh, uh, obviously he was in a bit of pain still. Sand als Holländer und Belgier, also da brauchst du nicht allzu traurig sein, da hast du noch ein paar Jahre, um da zu attackieren. Ja, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Commentator says he's up against the top sand riders in the world, Dutch and Belgians, so, and of course that's true. Dann machen wir weiter hier mit Sascha Kunen, auch der... Sascha Kunen from Belgium, that be in English. Yeah, bad luck uh, in the beginning. What happened? Yeah, my, yeah, my star was, was good, good and yeah, 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 in the second, second turn, turn, I make a mistake, mistake. And, I and I crash and I I, I, I get in the race, race, race and, and yeah, yeah, I, I go, go to the, the end. Second. Ja, er sagt, er hat einfach in der zweiten Kurve dann einen Fehler gemacht und dass er gecrasht und danach ist sein Rennen angefangen. Aber es war wirklich sehr, sehr... Good ride from Sascha Kunen from last to second. Very impressive. And in the end, nearly winning the race. But I think it was also very tough the race. Okay. Uh, what was the last lap? Too many lap riders. Too many commentator asking him, <laughs> yeah, if he had problems with the left riders, but he has difficulty understanding him. And now Bradley Mesters, the Dutch rider. Bradley, sehr, sehr starkes Rennen. Am Ende ist Sascha noch mal ein bisschen näher gekommen. Was war da deine Überlegung? Gewinnen oder den Titel? So, it was a very impressive race, but at the end, Sascha came quite close. What were you thinking? Winning the race or winning the championship? I was more thinking to win the race and I know I can be champion for the second. Also, er sagt, er hat natürlich mehr daran gedacht, das Rennen zu gewinnen, weil er wusste, auch wenn er Zweiter wird, ist er dann Champion. Es war wirklich sehr, sehr stark, aber es war auch eine schwierige Saison. Das Ziel ist nur ein bisschen zu ziehen, die Sache ist zu racist und es ist zu late. Ja, es ist ein bisschen anders als normal, aber ja, es ist ein bisschen anders. Ich kann es nicht mehr, aber ich kann es nicht mehr. Ich kann es nicht mehr, aber ich kann es nicht mehr. 
Er sagt, das war natürlich schon sehr schwierig, so spät zu starten und das war auch ein bisschen unnormal. Aber trotzdem ist er glücklich, dass er hier die Meisterschaft gewonnen hat. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Nochmal Gratulation an unseren Sieger André Gengelstadt. Right, uh, commentator friend Tommy Deichenbach finished, uh, finished the, the interviews there. They're going to commercials. We're staying with you for just a short while longer, uh, Ruan. Um, so uh, how was that for you to one day after your first ever race to get your first international race? That's, as I said, that's a, that's a steep curve, right? Yes, it's, it definitely is. But um, I actually wanted to ask you something, Tinas. Um, yes, ask me. Since you since you said there was a, not a, not always a Kawasaki in the top three, I wanted to ask yeah. you: What do you think is more important, the rider skill or the bike? Oh no, in motocross is definitely rider skill. Now in Kawasaki, let me qualify that um, Kawasaki haven't been focusing on two-stroke bikes for a long time, so. The 85cc bikes is, is almost certainly an old bike, but um, no, it's, it's definitely primarily, of course, at top level, the bike counts a lot, uh, but, but uh, without the rider, it's nothing. And, and what we have there is the proof from little Freddie Bartlett. He's, he's on a Yamaha, which uh, with the greatest of respect, I think is, is quite a, a bit down on power on, on the KTMs that he's up against, you know, and still, He's only 11 years old. He's, he's probably on an underpowered bike. Uh, they definitely haven't spent much on, on development of that bike and that we spoke about yesterday as well at the track. Um, so, and, and still he managed nearly a top 10, you know, he was 11th. So that's definitely a rider issue. And that's a, a great, great question. Now, just before we go, uh, Ruan, just for our viewers, just to um, introduce them a bit more to you uh let's throw up a little something and uh, you and i will talk about that in a minute
Well, there you go, Ron. That was a great performance. Uh, when did you record that exactly? We recorded it in April or May. Okay, or so. during lockdown. Around just when lockdown had started, right? Mm. All right. Well, yes. that was just to let our group members see what you're all about and uh, why we invited you. And it was a great, uh, I would say it was a great insight uh, for somebody who just, just been introduced to motocross to do such a knowledgeable and great broadcast of the race, uh, for which I thank you, uh, Ruan. Um, and I hope to welcome you at some time again soon. Uh, uh, keep a lookout uh, this afternoon for the road race. Uh, uh, that's going to be great, great action. Uh, and we'll certainly do a lot to promote you uh, and your musical career further in future. Thank you, Timus. All right, Ruan. So uh, we say thank you to all our viewers. We say thank you to Ruan. Congratulations to Bradley Mestis for the title, to our friends, all of them for great, great performances throughout. And with that, it is a me, Tina Snell, signing out from Velocity for another hour or two. Join us for the Moto3 Junior World Championships at 2 o'clock European time. And with that, it is Velocity Studios saying goodbye.